Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctic Vet YouTube channel. Today is Sunday and real quick, I apologize for not having a video Friday or Saturday. <laughs> oh, whew. It's uh, has been a little hectic and I have very bad lighting. So I'm gonna like slide over maybe like this. Oh, there you go, now you can see me. Today, we're gonna read chapter eight in our Bible. And again, you can get this very same Bible at the link in my description below. And then we'll dive into our day-by-day -day devotions for dads, which you can also get down below. So let's go ahead and roll that intro and dive into chapter eight. Peppermint, chapter 8, in Genesis. This is what we're reading, chapter 8 in Genesis. The flood subsides. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated, and in the seventh month, seventh month of the 17th day of the month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, and the waters continued to abate until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put on, put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening. Behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove. And she did not return to him any more. In the six, in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month of the twenty seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm swarm on, on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife, and his son's wives with him. Every beast, every creepy thing, every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. God's covenant with Noah. Then Noah built an altar, an altar to the Lord, and said, Some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings. To on the altar, and when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, see time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And that brings us into chapter 9, which is 
more about Noah's covenant, God's covenant with Noah. So if you guys want to hear that, stick around for next weekend and we will read chapter 9 in Genesis. Today that's going to wrap up our Bible reading and we're going to jump right on into our day-by-day -day devotions for dads, which is, this is a great book. Um, even if you're not a dad yet, but you know you will be, you're expected to be a dad soon, it, anything like this could be good for you. So we're going to read Manufacturing Greatness. There are no great men, only great challenges that ordinary men are faced by circumstances to meet. William F. Halsey Want your kids to do great things? Then don't let them settle for the easy way out. Some schools seem to be more worried about minimizing fuss than challenging kids to greatness. If little Johnny comes home with A's and B's, then his parents are not going to march down to the school and raise a ruckus. So the good grades come, everyone is happy, and an ordinary boy remains ordinary. That's why Johnny's, or Janie's, dad needs to make sure they face some challenges that are not so easy and sometimes less than pleasant. Examples? Cleaning the crawl space, scrubbing the lawn chairs, being in charge of the birdcage or litter box, making their bed, doing their own laundry, rewriting that English paper, joining debate, chess club, or model, model UN. I'm not even sure what that is. Take college prep classes, spending a season on a foreign mission field, or finding a job outside their comfort zone. Greatness doesn't happen by accident. The dads who know their children well are the ones who are best equipped to encourage and inspire them to take the next challenge. What about you? Burdening, burdening our children with high expectations sometimes gets a bad rap. That's malarkey. If you built a positive relationship with your kids, then you have the right and responsibility to spur them on to the next level. They don't have to give 110% in all things, but they should give 110% in some things. Your kids need to know what to what you expect from them. Funny thing about those expectations, they tend to come true. Hi, Bubba. Hi. So, if you guys enjoyed this Bible reading, remember it, these come absolutely free. No ads on these. I do, I do not monetize these. Um, I feel like this is my way of helping discipleship which discipleship is a disciple me discipling you helping bring you to god because it's bringing me closer to god too it's all in the process the what shape is that a triangle a house it's this a house shape of the day if you can make it a house good. all righty you're nice in this part okay bub. <laughs> Alright, anyways, if you guys enjoyed that video, smash that thumbs up. Don't forget to click the red subscribe button. And we will and see you in below. the next video. Don't forget that. You always forget comments below. Yep, comment below. And first subscribe. comment gets a pin. What? First comment gets a pin. No, first comment gets one dollar. No, I don't got one dollar. One quarter. Ah, one quarter. Cut. <laughs> one quarter. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pin your comment. Your first comment. <laughs> God bless y'all. Don't ever give up, God is here with you Yeah, You are a child, nothing but love is true Just got it fixed in view, keep your eyes on the prize That's life everlasting, only through Jesus Christ